What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the basement. It is hot as hell down here, I'm telling you right now. Um, yeah, it's hot in New York, it's hot all over. Uh, hopefully you guys are at Comic-Con enjoying yourselves over there in California. I've always wanted to go, I still haven't gotten there. I've been collecting comics about 20 years. It's a long walk. It is a long walk, Very. that's for sure. Uh, Ramon couldn't be here today, so we brought in our good buddy Cheeseburger Pete. What's up? And uh, as you guys know, a bunch of different trailers premiered this week at Comic-Con. Uh, we saw the trailer for Dark Knight, mm -hmm. which actually looks really cool. Um, somebody once asked me uh, recently at work uh, what I thought of Tom Hardy as Bane, and I was unfamiliar with this guy, but mm. any of you guys ever see Bronson? No. This movie is, a, if anybody out there is familiar with this movie, Charles this, Bronson? that's what I thought. Bronson my my buddy was like, oh yeah, he's, he's in a movie about Charles Donkey? Bronson. Donkey? <laughs> what? Donkey? Bronson Pinchot? No, not Bronson Pinchot. <laughs> Charles Bronson. Seriously. No, I am Charles Bronson. Yes. No, not Death Wish. That's yeah, what I... Charles Bronson. The British guy. He's not British, he's American. Shut up and wait a minute while I tell you the story. Because <laughs> I made the same mistake you did. I thought it, when this guy, my friend told me, uh, yeah, right. he's in a movie about, it's Charles which, Bronson. Which friend told you? Spencer. Spencer. Spencer Bass. Spencer Bass? Yes. Okay, keep going. Alright. <laughs> he tells me about this movie, Charles Bronson. First thought that came to my mind was, alright, they made a biopic with a Death Wish guy. Okay. Not that interesting, but alright. Is it biopic when they do a test to see if you have a cancer? You're editing, dude. I don't give a fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what am I doing? That's a biopic <laughs> Roger's oh, not oh, over there! <laughs> the heat's getting that, to him. Yeah. Yes, that's <laughs> biopsy. Keep going. And it's biopic, not biopic. Making you sound myopic. Mitochondria? <laughs> <laughs> he's getting a hint too. <clears throat> Alright, moving on. It's really biopic? biopic? I thought it was biopic. Biopic. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. Mm. See, you learn something every day. You do. Write that down. Alright. <laughs> So, so, continue your story. My friend told me about Tom Hardy. He said, if you want to know how good of an actor this guy is, go see this movie, Bronson. It's mm -hmm. about Charles Bronson. Right. My first inclination was the Death Wish guy. All right. So, I rented it from Netflix, and apparently it's about Britain's most famous psychopath. Nice. This guy just basically went through his whole life beating the shit out of people. And when he basically enlisted in these underground prison fight circuits, and in order to give him kind of a cool name, I don't remember what his real name was, but his manager, like one of his other prison mates, said, no, we need a cool name for you. How about uh, that guy Charles Bronson, who was popular at the time? The movie takes place in like the early 80s or so. So that's how he took the name Charles Bronson. And he basically spends half of the movie fucking buck-ass naked beating the shit out of prison guards with his bare hands. And it is a fucking crazy-ass movie. Alright. Well. And you can get around the schlong running around the movie. It's a fucking awesome flick. Yeah. He's <laughs> actually yeah, into the crazy. motion too, yeah. yeah. God bless him. <laughs> um how did he get there? Oh he plays Bane? Is he play that... he's playing Bane in a new but movie. But he'll be fully clothed in this movie. Yes, fortunately. Oh, I don't know. And he's he's a crazy dude, man. Just the crazy smile that he puts on for the for the flick, he's like really totally insane. It's a really cool movie. It's good to have a, a villain like that instead of having Joker. Like instead of having a, a regular. I heard yeah. Somebody said it was going to be the Riddler, but I always knew it was going to be Bane and and Catwoman. But maybe the Riddler right. also makes an appearance. Bane didn't have to be a main villain. That they was didn't always my show concern. him enough. Like they showed just like kind of his head and like he's getting up, but the way Christian Bale's Batman is like looking at him, he's like, yeah. Like so, you he's big, right. you know, somehow. Popped up on Venom, most likely. And from what I understand, that you said there's a, a longer Batman trailer yeah, that, at Harry Potter? When I saw Harry Potter, yeah. Cool. All right, I haven't seen Harry yet. I haven't seen Captain America yet either, but I hear good things. It came out 24 hours ago. Yeah. What? Captain America. Well, yeah, yeah. but Ramon's there like the, the opening day. Like, he's right. there at 10 a.m. He, he was there for the Matt show. Show. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Probably the biggest thing out this week, guys, was uh, DC Comics, the new 52, which was free at your comic shop. And it gives you a complete rundown of all of the new shit for, that's coming out from DC. Uh, it gives you like a four or five page little preview of Jim Lee's Justice League. Uh, it's drawn exceptionally well, as always. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's Jim Lee. But <clears throat> and you know, revamping the roster, everybody's looking more youthful. It looks exactly like, and dare I use this man's name, fucking Grant Morrison's JLA. You know, when back when like the was it mid to late 90s when JLA rebooted and it had 
you know, like basically the all star team was fucking Zoriel took yeah. uh, Hawkman's place, but it was Superman, Batman, Kyle Rayner's Green Lantern at that point because Hal Jordan was dead. Right. Um, Wonder, Wonder Woman, uh, Aquaman, and the Flash was Wally West at the time. Right. But regardless, it was it was DC's A list. And judging from this book here, we've got uh, it's five years ago, whatever, and uh, they weren't always. What do they say here exactly? Uh, there was a time when the world didn't know what a superhero was. They didn't view them as the world's greatest heroes. So they think Batman's a vigilante, the cops are going after him, and he gets saved from this weird, like, kind of cybernetic villain by Green Lantern who hits him with a fucking fire truck. <laughs> and then he's like, Batman, you're real? So, like, you get the impression, like, DC really is starting from Jump Street. Yeah, yeah, like, this, like, you know, basically all these heroes are now really like a myth and everybody's finding each other like whoa I thought, all over you know. again kind of thing yeah. so it could prove interesting it'll be a fantastic jump on point for any new readers that are looking to get into comics mm -hmm. uh, I would definitely say wait a month and you know honestly looking through this some of the stuff for, for DC looks pretty interesting and I'm gonna jump on board just be, you know before I make any kind of snap judgments uh, Justice League International stars Batman Booster Gold Guy Gardner uh, the August General in Iron, which is one of the dumbest names I've ever heard. Fire, Ice, Vixen, and Rocket Red. I can tell you right now, I'm not buying that. Rocket mm. Red? Rocket Red! Although yeah. it is Dan Jurgens, and he's been, he was doing he's pretty, pretty well with Booster Gold. So I don't know if he's pretty good. But, I don't know. The concept seems stupid. Now, yeah. Is Superman, it's just a... It, I mean, talk about it's a, a B-list team. Characters, man. Characters, man. It's a B-list team minus Batman. Yeah. And I'm not sure if... Is that... It looks like it's just Batman himself. It looks like it's Bruce Wayne. Well, Batman international now. might mean that it's like French Batman. Somebody else, yeah. yeah. French Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully that all goes he's away. Batman croissant. Incorporated is he's still around. A, he's throwing a back croissant instead of a barrel. Yeah, it was Batman. <laughs> um, <laughs> back croissant. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Now, is Superman... I heard Superman's supposed to be like going back... <clears throat> Superman Stay, staying where he is, or going, stay, going back to Superman is a couple pages so down the road. Action Comics is going to be written by uh, my absolute favorite writer, fucking Grant Morrison. Um, is he going to write Superman now? Yeah, he's writing Action Comics number one. And I, Superman like, is something. So he's going to change else. it completely, and make him. Uh, you know, he's, he's probably going to be it, from Mars. It looks here like he's being chased by the cops in this picture. The only thing good about this is Rags Morales is drawing the shit. Other right. than that, I can't think Why of anything. Why would he run from the cops? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to know. Probably because if if I had to fathom a guess, this we're starting from from day one. They've never seen a guy leap tall buildings. Going to no, see. No, but why would he run? He wouldn't need to run. Maybe he only doesn't flying. even know he can fly yet. He got the Superman suit on. He's in jeans and a t-shirt. Superman t-shirt. Yeah, Superman t-shirt. Conveniently. <laughs> I don't even like the, way, the one and only Grant Morrison. Thank God, there's only fucking one of them. But he got the cape on too. What do you think? Was it an accident? He just happened to put that that thing on. This will look good. It was a, it this was case. I'm not saying it's gonna be good. I'm just saying I'm gonna buy it before I hate it. Action Comics number one. Yeah, I know it's 1938. Well, lucky you're gonna buy because you know, uh, from what I'm understanding, anything. they're taking Superman back to like absolute day one. They, they, everybody's from day one, but like he's not with Lois Lane anymore. <clears throat> so choke up another dissolved comic book marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, she's dating right, some right, other dude. Divorcing uh, and she's marrying somebody else. Well, no, she, I, don't think, I don't think it ever happens. happens. So it's like. It's like never that's happened. a good question. I don't know. I think they're divorced. I think it's like divorcing. She's marrying somebody else who works at the Daily Planet. They're divorcing. That's Some fucking bullshit. stupid. So that's what I heard. That's retarded. That's what I heard. I wasn't sure. I posted the Except internet, the article divorcing. from the New York Daily News the other day on our Facebook, but I don't remember that was reading the one. anything. Was that the one I'm thinking about? I don't remember reading anything in there about divorce, but maybe, I, maybe. No, I don't know. Either way, but then, maybe, maybe so this is like a brand new day to shit. Oh, pretty much. Yeah, it's basically exactly what it is. There's Wonder Woman, which I never given a too much of a shit about anyway, although it is written by Brian Azzarello, so uh, he's not... Dark, yeah. yeah, that might actually be worth looking into purely on that name alone. Yeah. yeah. Into the, movie. Uh, the Flash number one, the tagline for this is, if you don't know who Barry Allen is and who The Flash is, then this is the perfect title for you. So it, it basically looks yeah, at... Yeah, I don't want to go through everything again. I, I know, mean. I know. And I'm hoping that they can find some kind of happy marriage between really starting it over for the new fans and giving us people who've been something involved in it for so, right? yeah give us something to work with right. here you know like otherwise i i understand all of the, the a lot of the dc stories were bad but wow like 
it, it's almost like it's it's turning the 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 true blue fan, the the guy who's been here for so long, or the girl who's been here for so long, right. it turns them off because now you know. If they're gonna start everything over again, and then it's kind of like they're delaying coming up with a new story. With new stuff, right? So it seems like because now they're gonna be able to introduce everybody all over again, and it's gonna be a new story, right. quote unquote. Yeah. So I I don't know how happy I am with it. I think. I don't know what the fuck I think I, at I this point. I just can't believe Action Comics and Detective were going to start from the beginning. How long is that going to last, do you think? Do you really think? You think they'll go back, like, well, they'll yeah, go back to the original number. They have to. I mean, to, to avoid, to wantonly avoid a milestone, like number 1,000, to really earn number 1,000, how do you, how do you stop numbering your, your books well, like that? 100 mm-hmm. issues, right? Detective? Give or take 150 issues. What's it going to take, 10 years at the mm-hmm. most? Mm-hmm. The one thing I am really happy to hear about is Batman, Batman. is back to being Batman, Bruce is Batman, Mm -hmm. uh, and Scott Snyder, who is the writer on American Vampire, which is one of the best stories running around comics these days, and DC's Vertigo line, is writing Batman number one. Thank God. Yeah, and Greg Capullo is doing the artwork, and it looks pretty sick so far. So I'm I'm just thrilled with actually getting Batman back to a dark, grim, gritty character. I don't believe in a can't be Batman. Mm. I don't believe mm-hmm. in like uh I you know, like the the Justice League International Batman, you right, know? Like yeah, yeah. that's that's still too lighthearted for me. Yeah. And that, that's my personal opinion. It's like I'm, fast food Batman or you're, yeah, something like that. Great line. Yeah. You're anybody out there is entitled to their opinion about their favorite character. This is how I like my Batman. But there are other comics Detective. out there. There's Detective Comics <laughs> number one. I like ketchup on my ketchup. <laughs> I used to eat ketchup. There's a t-shirt for yeah. that. I like a little uh, coffee with my sugar. Tony Daniels writing and drawing uh, Detective That's Comics number one. I'm noticing they're letting a lot of artists Artist. try yeah. their hand at writing. Yeah. George Perez is writing Superman. Yeah. And he's um, drawing it. Who's doing uh, Finch? David Finch is, is back to doing The Dark Knight, which is starting again at number one. I can't believe that's the three issues. Four. <laughs> it, it, four is coming out next week, which will probably end the story. And then we've got this. Oh, my uh, God. So we've got Batman number one, Detective Comics number one, Batman The Dark Knight number one. Here you go. To that. Yeah. Batwoman number one is coming out. Uh, I know Steve and Ramon have been really kind of hankering for that. So is this Every- is this going to be uh, Barbara Gordon? No, back? no, it's Cassandra Cain. Oh, Cassandra Cain. Okay. No, no, it's, Barbara Gordon. It's Kate. Um, no, somebody. Who you really? Yeah. Because I think it's, they should go back to Barbara Gordon. Barbara Gordon's Batgirl. Oh, okay, Batgirl. Oh, come on. She's not paralyzed. The Thank one God. awesome thing to come out of the fucking DC reboot. Yeah. Granted, I don't like that they undo one of the most phenomenal Batman stories there ever was. Which remind me, I have to borrow that from you because I never read it. It's Kate, Kate, you never read the Killing Joke. I never read the Killing <gasps> Joke. Ooh, you okay? Yeah. No, him. Well, why? Why would you not do that? Because I wasn't always a, a big DC or Batman fan yeah, when I started. That's, that's yeah. That's just... Kate. Kate's on me. Kate. Kate uh, I can't remember. But she's she's the daughter of a, of a sergeant in the army or something like that. It's not. It's a new character. It's a new Kate character. Kane. Okay. Interesting. A.K. Oh, this was the girl that was Flame Bird in the uh, in that the Superman thing. The yeah. Batman Superman deal. The the, uh, the whole Action Comics thing when Superman was off on New Krypton. Right, right, right. And Flame Bird and uh, Nightwing, Nightwing were, were the Kryptonian folk or whatever. That yeah, they, was they, going they on. were the they were uh, Superman's stewards, so to speak. And Either way, the character looks still exactly out. the same as the original Batwoman from. You know, Detective Comics, so I'm sure that'll be cool. I'm gonna read yours. It was Detective cool Comics. Cool artwork. doing the artwork? Yeah. Um, um, J.H. Williams, is that it? Yeah, J.H. Williams. Williams. Okay. So another writer artist that's doing shit. J.H. Williams, the third. So, and we've also got Batman and Robin, which unfortunately the one thing to not get 86, and I know a couple of you will disagree with me on this, but I never liked the idea of Damian Wayne. I don't like the idea mm-hmm. of Batman's kid. It just, it never worked for me. Yeah. Well, if they're going to do it in a reboot, why would they, why would they keep it Damien? Like, I mean, I mean, I know he's the most recent one, but I mean, do it where it's maybe Nightwing, you know, uh, Dick Grayson is Nightwing and maybe just have Tim Drake. Be gonna well, Tim Drake is, on. Tim Drake has moved on, actually. We'll find him in a little while. Tim Drake uh, is Red Robin now, isn't it? Tim Dra- well, we'll get to him. Red he's Robin a couple a pages restaurant. in. Uh, yeah. Batman and Robin is written by Peter Tomasi, which is, is not so bad. Mm, uh, he's he's a little hit or miss, but I've always enjoyed his stuff on GL Core. So, now, I mean, here here's the only problem I have. I mean, I'm just gonna continue 
with this whole idea. As if we never spoke. There are way too many Batman books coming out right now. We've gone from reboot. nothing good to, here's everything, you're bound to find one you like. Right. But it's Basically. stupid. You should keep it just Batman, just do like Batman, Detective Comics, and maybe one other book like The Dark Knight, and leave it at that. I mean, it's it's way too much it, batty overload. And is it every every writer wants to try their hand at it? Is that what it is? Or? That's one possibility. Of those I mean, well, it's I, just like every superhero movie that's come out since The Dark Knight is trying to do The Dark Knight for their own, own particular purpose. superhero. And then you got Batgirl number one. It's not gonna be a good story. It's not gonna be a nah. good story, and it's unfortunate. But Batgirl's now um, Barbara Gordon Barbara again. Barbara Gordon, she can walk. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, of all the amazing things that were happening scientifically in the DC Universe, nobody could get this girl to walk. I mean, all Zatanna had to do was say, Barbara Gordon walk backwards. Why couldn't that work? <laughs> Bitch was too busy blowing Batman to fucking give a shit about Barbara Gordon. Yeah, and fighting off uh, yeah, Wonder yeah, Woman, yeah, too, yeah, right? Yeah. You have to do the motion. Yeah, it's not funny without the motion. Other than that, it's just vulgar. So, Birds of Prey starts again. Red Hood and the Outlaws? <laughs> the Red Hood's getting his own book. But I don't why. And the other ones. Draw back to this for a second. Nightwing, uh, Dick Grayson's back in a black and red Nightwing costume. Okay. Isn't that like being demoted? So, yeah, it's kind of like it's being demoted. That's, that's funny. That's like, that number's like what? Maybe 10 different Batman Gotham City related Type books right now? And Catwoman. Don't forget Catwoman. Yeah. yeah. Birds, yeah. Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey. Let's do the count in a minute. I want to bring this up because I thought Red Hood was going to be. In uh, in this, so read the read the description of Batman and Robin number one, battling evil with his son Damien at his side. Batman now realizes that the hardest part of the job may be trying to work together. Is that the whole? That's uh. the, now it's him and his son. Yeah, and not just Dick Grayson. And, and no, it's his son. It's, 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 it's Bruce that's Wayne. The, that's Bruce the problem. Wayne. That's the one thing I like is Bruce Wayne's back as Batman, but. Now you got another Batman running around in well, Africa, and yeah, well, that's the or only, Dick Grayson's back to be a night. That's the only. That's the only. The only good thing about the Batman reboot is the fact that Bruce Wayne is back to Bruce being Bruce they Wayne. Really the make problem it. is, is they're not going back to the classic characters, which is what they're doing with every other title. They should make Nightwing very bitter and like. You know, <laughs> Will he thought, even remember that he was think, Batman at this point? Drinking problem, drinking problem. Like, how is this going to relate? Like, you know, I love Flashpoint. Don't get me wrong. I think this is a. Gr it's a great series, but how. Are they going to jump from one to the other and keep the history? But this was why I thought the Red Hood was going to be running around as a villain in Batman and Robin. Was, uh, as Batman and Robin try to adjust to their new partnership, a figure emerges from Bruce Wayne's past. His name is Nobody, and he's not happy that Batman Incorporated is shining a light on his own shadowy war against evil. What's his name? Nobody. No, what's his name? Nobody. What's his name? Nobody. <laughs> Who's Nobody on? is his name. Who's on first? That's right. <laughs> we, we need to move on. Core. Now, but wait, now, you, you, you're glossing over one of the most amazing aspects of Green Lantern. He's got a ring now. Look who it is! It's Sinestro. He's back as a Green Lantern. I think that's kind of cool. Like, I, I think that's cool, that too. Because but, but, you know what? That kind of brings it back to a true reboot. Because when Green Lantern started, Sinestro was his mentor. Right. And I'm glad to see that, like, the whole... Outlook of the Green Lantern story doesn't get changed that much. Right. What I honestly think is going to happen, at least like, you know, towards the end of Flashpoint, they're probably going to have somehow the heroes are going to remember the former world. Like, yeah. I don't know that it's going to be some total reboot. Because I, I don't see how they could make that mix, you know? Uh -huh. Like, you've yeah. got aspects of the old world, and you've got all of these this new stuff going on. Right. I don't see how they can get that to work together without yeah. some sort of recollection. But, like, how is... Why is Superman then in, in the be Starting it fucking totally from the beginning. Like, and, looking like Superboy. Right. You know, and Kyle Rayner's running around with the rest of the Rainbow Lantern Corps. Um, Sinestro's a Green Lantern, and Hal Jordan's basically fired. Mm. Like, how are they gonna do this? I have, I have faith. Because I got faith in Jeff Johns. I, he, he's a, I've always enjoyed his, his Green Lantern shit. I didn't really dig on Flash Rebirth too much. I thought they dragged it out a little too far. But I did like uh, Jeff Johns' Flash 13 issue run. Mm. So I'm confident that he's gonna be able to do something good with this. Simply I don't know where Jeff Johns has been uh, DC's rising, I don't wanna say rising star. But he's been, he's been their, their answer. Their bright light. Yeah. You uh, know, shining fun. light is a yeah. bright light is a very good way to describe it. Would you say that once he was employed with them, it was their brightest day? Hmm. Can I hit him? No, no, we'll let that pun go. 
Well, make him fly. I might I also say that the day he the pun? Wait, bye bye to the pun. <laughs> Bye, bye. Would you also say that, you know, when they have Grant Morrison writing all their books, that was the together, Blackest, 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 Blackest Night? night. Yeah. Darkest Night, Blackest definitely. Blackest. That was a bad joke. Oh my god. You have to kill that joke. Here you go, just help yourself. Yeah, I need to make a joke now. And, you know, like the rest of DC's books that oh, they advertise in the back. Red Lanterns, Justice League, Dark Wish. Why are the Red Lanterns getting their own book? Why are they not just going to be a villain in the Green Lantern Corps? Read there. the description there, please. Trash to this and his Red Lantern Corps return in their own series battling injustice in the most bloody ways imaginable. Since when do the Red Lanterns battle injustice? Like, they are injustice personified. I, I understand that, like, Atrocitus wanted the Guardians brought to justice for the murder of his entire planet, but they don't only, strike me as a it, so police. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that makes me feel better. Yeah, it's better not to think Thanks, about it. Thanks, Steve. What? Maybe at a clock. That makes me feel a lot better. A metronome. A metronome. A metronome. Um, uh, hopefully there's there's kind of something for everybody, and these other little books like Animal Man and friggin' uh, Hawk and Dove, and I'm kind of happy to see Static Shock running around Static his own book. That was an awesome cartoon. If you pick this up, DC Comics New 52, hit us up. You know the deal. Questions at PeachBasement.com. Uh, Facebook.com backslash Pete's Basement. Tweet us and just let us know what you're into. What books are you really looking forward to? We'll, Me? See, we'll see you next time. <laughs> no, we're not done yet. Oh, we're not no, we got all that left. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what book? What are you? What are you definitely picking up out of this? Um, we have been asked like, what books are we? Really I'm gonna looking pick up Birds to? of Prey because I was reading it. Um, I know you're picking up Batwoman. Batwoman. Uh, Batman Dark Knight. That actually intrigues me too. I'm gonna get it. I'd like to check that out. Um, I'm definitely back, gonna back get girl, at actually. least the first issue of all of the Batman books. Detective, yeah, I was gonna get the first issue of Batman. See what because there's, there's about, I've been just, I just want a Batman book to like, and there's bound to be one in there. It, like you said, like, here's everything. Like yeah, something. Well, well, this you know, I just hope that oh, yeah. after the first three months, they maybe Get do a couple of cancellations because some of the story is gonna be shit. I, I'm definitely picking up the Flash. I'm definitely picking up uh, the the Green Lantern stuff. As far Green Lantern's core title with Sinestro in it, definitely. I like the Green Lantern core. I'm gonna test out uh, Kyle Rayner and the Rainbow Core, whatever the actual the New Guardians I think is the title of the book. And I'm gonna test out the uh, Red Lantern shit, the Rainbow Core. It's almost like they are. It's like it's like Kyle Rayner and the Jewish people. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna test out the Red Lantern books. I'm gonna test out. Superman, though I, I don't go into that with high hopes at all. Oh my god. Well, at least Grant Morrison's everything. not fucking up Batman this time. I am going to test out everything because I care about you guys. And I'll waste my money on shit and I'll let you know what shit is shit and what shit is good shit. Uh, I'm going to try out Wonder Woman. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I think, though, I mean, and I, I think I speak for almost everyone in the comics industry when I say everybody's looking forward to Jim Lee and Jeff Johns' Justice League. Yeah. I would say. See so. how long Jim Lee lasts. So. Yeah, well, it's going to be a fucking one issue, one story arc. Unfortunately. Well, yeah, that's that's usually the way Jim Lee works, but uh, he shows no signs of slowing down. His artwork looks exceptional. Now, how's that? The aftermath. Um, it answers a couple of questions at least, and it was outright interesting. Basically, you need life. Um, <laughs> Hal Jordan's fired. He has no ring anymore. He's fired. He got fired. So I like the idea of was it like a Green Lantern, like Donald Trump saying, "You're fired." The Guardians basically said, uh, you killed one of our own. Even though he saved all their little blue asses, now, you're fine. For somebody a, who's been out of the loop for a while, who did he kill? They give him a Krona. Okay. Okay, if you oh, haven't wow. been reading okay. Green Lantern and the War of the Green Lanterns, you definitely missed out, sir. Mm -hmm. I would advise you, um... I'll probably end up grabbing a trade. Get the trades. Honestly, it's, it'll probably be out in two trades or one big hardcover. Definitely pick up War of the Green Lanterns. Pause for a bad Steve Joe? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Permission to yeah, of course. Permission to come aboard, sir. <laughs> um, was he giving a pink slip? Because Green Lantern gave him. A... <laughs> I bet you'd like to give Star Sapphire a pink slip. I gotta go to oh, thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. Be sure to tip your waitress. <laughs> um, and they, they go into explaining a lot of stuff in here. First of all, I like that this splash page of Mogo actually like kind of. Orbiting Owa as a, yeah, cool. like a yeah. fragment. Like rings, yeah. Okay. Because Jon Stewart had to blow up Mogo. He's oh, dead. Oh, Jesus Christ. He blew up a planet, basically. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and what it comes down to is uh, Kilowog, and Kilowog just throws up his ring. He's like, if, if this asshole's keeping his ring and Jordan's fired, I'm out. Peace. Mm. And basically, they, they explain to you that the Guardians 
are they are showing emotion, but they're they're trying not to. They are so afraid of Hal Jordan and the fact that the Green Lanterns weren't supposed to be able to turn on the the, the Guardians. Mm. That so the idea that one of them could kill him is absolutely beyond their comprehension. Right. So they're scared shit of Hal Jordan, which was why they ousted him in the first place. Like, no, get out of here. We, we can't have you around. Yeah. And hopefully, like, it doesn't like they're afraid that other Green Lanterns are going to get the same idea, like, well, hey, we can turn against the Guardians, too. Yeah. So they're, they're basically just worried about their seat of power on top, on top of the police force universe. Mm -hmm. um, they're like the commissioner, and they don't want to give up their power. And they're kind of coddling Sinestro at this point, because maybe they think that Sinestro's control over fear will help them in some way. They haven't gone into that. But all they did say was, uh, you know, Sinestro, if you want that ring gone, you come with us. Because mm -hmm. Sinestro doesn't want the ring. Right. That's that's the one thing they've made abundantly clear. He doesn't want the green, no. the green lantern ring back? Probably. Yeah. Uh, in a classic, uh, really cool splash page, and I must say, Sinestro is looking very much super friendly in this in this picture. <laughs> uh, you think I want this ring, Kilowog? Get it off! And he can't. For whatever reason, he can't take it off. Uh, and also, now you've got a couple of rogue lanterns at the end here who basically just go to uh, Nor Sorak Soranic Natu, or whatever you pronounce her name, she's Sinestro's daughter, and they figure, like, listen, like, your dad's an asshole, you know he's an asshole, we know you hate him way more than we know. We know you do. know that we know he's an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we want you to sneak into the Guardian Citadel and execute Sinestro. And that's where the book leaves off. Oh, it's wow. only two issues, so the idea of them fucking it up will be fairly difficult. Mm. But th then again, this is DC, and then I want some definite questions answered. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the next issue. I'm not sure if it's coming out in a week, two weeks, a month, or never. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like multiple choice. Yeah. <laughs> None of the above. But overall, it's great. It's a great wrap up so far to War of the Green Lanterns. Um, moving on a little bit, Flashpoint. This Meanwhile, back in the Hall of Justice. So Which was the sole reason? That. No, it's the sole reason that. I bought the book in the first place. Was the title Legion of Doom? Yeah, of course. Plastic Man is a maniac. Yeah, uh, Plastic Man is basically Beetlejuice on coke. Right hey, now. this scene alone. Now, now you guys will remember. I didn't care for the first issue. You don't even need to pick up the first issue. You can get this one. Uh -huh. And just know that the first issue has Heat Wave, which is the you know the Flash villain teaming up with a villainous Plastic Man, a psychotic villainous Plastic Man. Who was man. merged with somebody named Eel? He is Eel O'Brien. Is Eel. his name? Oh, okay. Okay. Is uh, Plastic Man's real name. I realized that was his alter ego. My bad. And, That's okay. And um, and he, Heat Wave hates Cyborg because he he scarred him. He set mm -hmm. him on fire and he burnt him. So now he's gonna just fuck up Cyborg and Detroit. Well, try to. Good reason as any. Oh, of course. This scene alone, where Plastic Man is wrapped around a couple of other convicts that Heat Wave wants on his side. Yeah. Really, just as kind of cannon fodder as he tries to escape. Yeah. Plastic Man is wrapped around them in barbed wire, <laughs> and these dudes are like, well. What the fuck? We don't want to follow you. And the barbed wire tightens. <laughs> like, all right, all right, all right, call him off. <laughs> genius. Yeah. Pure fucking genius. This is this is where like a cartoon character that gets inserted into the regular canon of the DC universe is being written very well. And now you've got Animal Man and Heat Wave fighting. Somehow, uh, that yeah. was great. It's How, very bloody. He, yeah, oh, it yeah. is. The uh, the fight scenes in this are great. Heat, Animal Man like claws Heat Wave's stomach, and then Heat Wave bites off Animal Man's nose. Animal Man basically gets curb stomped. Yeah. By put Heat your Wave. fucking mouth on the curb. And <laughs> put your fucking mouth on the curb. Yep. Uh, this is an awesome book. I would definitely suggest if you're not gonna buy it, uh, toss through it at least. Steal it. I mean, don't, 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 don't steal it. it. <laughs> Bad, Steve. Bad. Uh, I'll give <clears throat> Daredevil number one. Surprisingly good. This yeah, really very good. Actually. cameo was annoying, but everything else was good. But the spot had like it was an effective cameo, they were kind and of it making was fun of him. They, but they really show like, what this character is capable of. Like, he could be a really badass villain if he wasn't yeah. called the Spot. Right. And he didn't run around in a polka dot outfit. Right. It's if he didn't run around in a polka dot outfit, was what I was trying it's to say. It's a teeny weeny polka dot. Yellow polka, polka dot Yellow polka dot bikini. Yeah, he's wearing a unitard though. This so. particular scene where. Uh, he just like opens up a little portal in this mobster's chest and just snaps his neck. Yeah, that's awesome. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Even Daredevil doesn't quite realize like what he's up against until it's almost too late. But yeah. he puts a stop to him. But uh, the thing is, they don't they don't show you how. I'm okay with that. Like, <laughs> because like, big hole. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, basically, he just like dives into one of the spots holes, and then the next uh, is a the next a page is a cover of the Daily Bugle. He's kissing the bride. D D K O spot and P O S mob. That's great. <laughs> Uh, basically, it's Mark Wade. Great. That's all. That's yeah, yeah. I hope he stays on this book for a long time. Uh, Daredevil is really good. I didn't like the whole Shadowland thing. That was just Even dumb. Even the end of that was stupid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the you know you talking about Daredevil Returns, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was that like was, an issue, one issue was good, but then it was, it was stupid. stupid. It, it could have been done a lot better. Uh, <laughs> but basically, he took a four issue break. Uh, I don't know if is he going to encounter uh, Black Panther, the, the new man without fear. What's going on there? I'm sure eventually. Like, uh, the new it's man like, hey, dude, fear. I'm back. Um, Can I get that title back? <laughs> yeah. Can I have Go my back to Africa. Back? Nobody gives a shit about you. <laughs> I always liked the Black Panther. Actually, I thought he was a cool character. Mm. He just he's. I don't think he's just there. ever really been written exceptionally properly. well or yeah. properly. Uh, the artwork is really simple in this. The backup story is classic, which is just kind of like a rundown of how Dee Dee's powers work, and he's kind of explaining it to Foggy as they walk through New mm -hmm. York City. And uh, if you notice, there'll be little like squares, like specifically that that Matt that Murdock is noticing. Centering on, yeah, yeah, like a car fume, a girl's ass, yeah, some girl's hair blowing in the wind, and he mentions her shampoo and everything. Right. He stops Foggy from walking over a thing of dog shit. Here's a bird flap it, uh, flying away like a you know half a block. I almost enjoyed the side story better than uh, the main they were both tale. Good. They were both good, yeah. Uh, the end of this book shows it looks like uh, Captain America is coming to talk to him mm. as like you know make make sure it is still Matt Murdock. Make sure he's got all his marbles straight and everything. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but at the same time, he's he we we're led to believe that he is about to be attacked by somebody else. Because somebody fires a grenade launcher with, uh, with a radar jammer, basically, for Daredevil to be unable to much, see what's right. going on. Yeah, there's too much shit so going on in the hit. air, so he doesn't know what's... There's too His much radar's going, going haywire. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The only reason Wham. I have this here with me is uh, just one more note on budgeting that we've been talking about for the past two weeks. I enjoy Warlord of Mars. This is actually a really cool book. Um... But at the same time, now they have one miniseries going out, which is Deja Thoris, who is the girl on the cover. She's mm -hmm. like the Martian princess who's been around for some 500 plus years or whatever. And uh, John Carter's got the hots for her. Right. As anybody would. She's a red girl with little yellow fucking pasties on. And that's all she wears. <laughs> um, it's good to be a Martian. But now you've got... A <laughs> You've got a mini series going with her origin that may or may not be miniing itself. Like a, it was supposed to end with five issues, and now it seems to be continuing. Oh, boy. And it's now they've also got another book, Warlord of Mars: The Fall of Barzoom, which is one of the cities on Mars. And it just—it's like Deja Thor says Barzooms. Yes, she does. <laughs> Big ones. I think we wouldn't miss Ramon too much. We've got this pervert. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's just like, it's so much, man. And now, I, I'm really enjoying this title, and I hope I don't have to drop it out of spite, you know? Like, I, I don't want to have to pick up another fucking miniseries and be buying three of the same goddamn title. Mm. I'm going to buy it because I'm stupid, but I will keep you posted on exactly really? how yeah, that first, stupidity folks. pays off. And incidentally, the very first comic book that I ever own, and I still have it somewhere, is actually Marvel's uh, short-lived series, John Carter, Warlord of Mars. Which yeah. is really funny. I didn't even know Marvel made one. Yeah, they did. Um, I forget who it was that was the the artist or whatever. But That's interesting. Oh, this is yours. Yeah. That's mine. Oh, you noticed the pink, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Snake in the grass. When did you do that? Why did any of you let me know he did that? <laughs> they can't talk to me. They might have, seen no. I might have changed the camera angle by that point. Oh. Ah. Steve's yeah. mad ninja. Uh, Justice League of America 59, Fall of Eclipso concludes... Just a fun story. I don't read much Justice League, and especially with this crew, with like Gorilla Man and fucking Jade and Dick Grayson's Batman. Jesus. I didn't give a shit enough. But the reason I started reading this was because it crossed over with the uh, Fall of Doomsday, or Reign of Doomsday, uh, and that series decided it wanted to suck at the end. So I thought, well, hell, I, I just wound up one story crossing over in the middle of another story. So, why not pick this one up? So I backtracked two issues of JLA, and then I've been with this ever since. It was actually a pretty cool story. I think I'm going to suck at the end. Yeah, that's, that's exactly <laughs> what it did. Um, you know, today I think I'm going to take a left turn to batshit crazy. There's a lot of, like, magical characters running around. What's and... She doing in there? No, it's Jade. Jade. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, Eclipso oh takes control over a lot of, like, DC side characters that you get to see. Uh, Eclipso. 
He's like a badass villain, even though he's got a dumbass name. Not to be confused with Cullip, so. The, this yeah. one, I did find this kind of stupid. Like, at one point, um, Eclipso's powers are based on the moon. Right, well. And the moon gets, like, half destroyed because somehow this is part of Eclipso's plan. And he wants to devastate the Earth as well because Eclipso, if you don't know, is a fallen angel. He hates God. And in order to basically fuck over God, so he he's going to break all of his toys. Which is the human race. Okay. So, by destroying the moon, he's somehow unleashing the moon's power into himself, and it's also causing massive devastation on Earth. He's that, destroying which, the as would naturally happen, because the tides are now fucked up and all that stuff. Right. Like and apparently, gravity controls the gravity of the moon controls like the blood flow in our bodies as well. So there's like people just bl bursting into bloody goo. Nice. As they say. Um, I'm but, melting. So now they're going to fix the moon. Let me let me read this to you. They're um, going to fix the moon. It's not like you can take a wrench. To it. No, no, you enjoy this. This is great. <laughs> they just beat the shit out of uh, Eclipso. He's gone. Wait, we're not done yet, Obsidian says. Batman, to, uh, Dick Grayson. Right. Jenny and your father have to put the moon back together. That would be Jade and um, Alan Scott, Green Lantern. If we can, says Green Lantern. It's a tall order. Even with St. Walker's help, and then Supergirl shows up and says, I'll help whatever I can, let's fix things first. Well, King's Three Horse minutes and 49 King's seconds. Not put the moon back They've been kind of, like, timing the whole devastation of the Earth and how long the Earth has had to deal with having a fucked up moon. Uh -huh. Three minutes and 49 seconds, all the super-powered people fly off to fix the moon. Twelve minutes and 12 seconds. And so, and everything's put back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just skip a whole co what could have been a cool splash page of, of them the just moon getting them put them. back together and shit. Yeah. Like minutes. a jigsaw puzzle. They went to 12 minutes? Yeah, yeah, it just went right there. So it took 8 minutes for them to get to the moon? Hey man, it's a big. F no, they're on the moon. They're on the moon. It took 8 minutes to put minutes. it back together. Yeah. <laughs> That's quick. So apparently. It's like super a fucked up Rubik's Cube, man. They could have did some shit like that. That's like color by numbers with a fucking jigsaw oh, puzzle. So and so, <laughs> it's all fixed. So that was like the one dumb shit moment in this. this <laughs> I had to share with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fixed. Yeah, like, and like, that was good. Hey, hey, that was tough, man. That's like, that's like one of those things when like a Mel Brooks was like, you know, I understand, I understand, why are you shouting? Wasn't your hump on the other side? Like, I, I can totally see the, the writer and the artist and possibly Just Dan Didio like, trying their what are you gonna do? Nothing. They're trying to get us to think about how to fix it like that. Oh my god. Like, fuck it. That's how like, many people are really gonna complain? <laughs> Me. <laughs> Cause I'm an asshole. You know what, they, they, they could have done this like the can't be Batman show. And it's fixed. Basically, that's what it was. <laughs> that was, yeah, just without that little. They could, yeah, they could have had a little panel of nothingness. Yeah, like, just, yeah just give me something. Yeah, you, know, you just have a JLA logo. It's done. Right, oh, man. Moving on. We'll do the X Men. Two cool X Men books. Yes. Fear itself 541. Uh, I didn't give X Men. F I, I, wow, just wow. Hammer, hammer, hammer. Yeah, yeah, no, it was cool. Like, they actually wind up fighting the Juggernaut, they get fucked up by the Juggernaut. Now, my only my only problem with this is why the fuck wouldn't Asgardian Serpent give the Juggernaut its own fucking hammer? They everybody's got everybody's hammers got in hammer. fear itself. It's horrible. They're getting hammered. I like how you haven't been reading it. Don't try. I don't try. I, you know what? That's... Thing's got a hammer. Absorbing Man's got a hammer. Titania Man, Titania Girl, whatever her name is, got a hammer. Titania. Everybody's got a hammer. Scott D's got a hammer. I don't have a hammer. I don't have a hammer. MC's got one too. They have. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh... Uh... <laughs> Cyclops is having everybody one by one try to. Stop yeah, him. Not to get like, his, just a little lamb, just to try to So the fire. White Queen can like go into his mind and stop him. Stop him. Yeah. Now Magneto says, you know, I'll take I'll take care of this. And then you know It's he, a cool scene, he yeah. Throw, he throws he throws the hammer at him. Don't worry, I'll get it. But then he realized the last, the last second that he can't control it. Right. And, and it's and not he, it's not made of metal. Even his hammer is like, you know, Yeah, it's so. un, it's it's just uncontrolled. Out of the way by the last minute? Uh Kitty Pride phases the hammer right through him. She grabs hold of Magneto. Yeah. Now when could Kitty Pride fly? Oh, she's got a lot of cool, interesting new powers ever since she's... she went, she went back to being um, intangible. She was no, I knew that. Oh, so knew like she's she kind of like shows what she's like phasing no, she through the air while. now. Oh, so her okay. powers are like souped up. Okay, gotcha. I it was a while when she Very was cool. Involved. And like I like the t the smaller type where Magneto's like his hammer's unstoppable too. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, like many was like shit. I mean, <laughs> now people were like Thor's hammer is made of Uru metal, right. which Magneto can control. Exactly. 
which uh, well, that was 1960s Marvel. I'm not sure if that still stands now. Right. But well, maybe they made it Uru, did happen. Maybe then. they made Uru a mineral instead of a metal. Or, or magic, like stone. either way. Well, yeah, so magic now Cyclops gets all the X-Men together into one place so Hope can siphon off their powers. Uh, you'll remember that Hope is like a rogue with a bubble around her. Like yeah. As long as they're near her. A certain amount of distance. Yeah, yeah, certain proximity to her, she can uh, utilize their powers. So she pulls off Juggernaut's helmet, and the White Queen goes into his mind, and all of a sudden the White Queen gets taken over by the Serpent's like mindset. Yeah, which I conscious. thought was actually kind of cool. I don't give oh, a yeah. fuck about the Serpent or anything else, but... That alone was a cool scene. Absolutely. It, it was kind of like a what the- Whoa! Like, I didn't- Yeah, yeah I didn't expect that. Because you might think, okay, the helmet's off, they're gonna get him, but no. no the, thing, the thing is, is that Cyclops draws up a textbook perfect plan to get it to work, and then- yeah. And it just the it one backfires twist on him. And it just backfires on him. Get, it's great. Gillen, that is not- Yeah. He's been doing- he was doing Uncanny X-Men prior to this, that mm -hmm. whole story. I can't think of the, the race of people that they would had the story with last time. But it was good. I liked it. And he's continuing writing these. And it's good. Mm. I liked Greg Land's art. I don't care what Ramon says. It's phenomenal. It's fantastic. And Love the way Love he it. does... Greg Land's faces are amazing. Mm -hmm. And the way he does her, the White Queen's facial expressions, like, yeah. just a... Like, you know, she's like, I got this. You know, she's going into his mind. All of a sudden, he's like, There's oh, what the fuck? Right. And yeah. then her eyes just clear out. She's like... It's awesome. Unstoppable. So we got that page uh, coming up for you. The great, the great thing about that is, I mean, more and more and more of these artists are using a lot of real life models and photography and things like that to get all of their faces down. But I mean, even with that, Greg Land's artwork is just. Yeah. And even at the like, it doesn't wear off at all. Like the Juggernaut just plows right through the X Men, and the White Queen is still like still taking, taking over. over. Yeah. Ramon's gripe was that a lot of his interior art is like just posing. Which it is, but yeah. not everything is. But that's because he uses, uh, you know, was it? Thank you, photo reference. Yeah. A lot so of you can't reference. get too. You can get action scenes, but you know, at the same time, it's it's a little static, I guess. He still does. I'm gonna he use still does my artistic uh, terms there. It's, it's static. Mm -hmm. It it is a little bit static, but I mean, he does actually involve a lot of a lot more action poses and things like that. So. I like it. I always liked it. I always liked yeah, it. Yeah, it's an awesome story. art. X-Men 15, this was a cool ending to a story. They don't kill off the evolutionaries. He just kind of it's like, I'll be sticks back. Yeah, it's yeah. like, I'm going to kill Cyclops. Right. Yeah. Like, he's meant to basically protect the mutant race, and he wants to see that the mutant race, you know, thrives. Ascends to power. And being that the X-Men just, like, basically said, screw you, we don't need you, we just pissed off kind of the wrong, the wrong guy. guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was good. But the guys, but now he's centered on one person and one person alone, right. Cyclops. And it was a pretty fun story. He's a pretty powerful villain too. Yeah. Right? So I like this new this, this. You know, it was. He's not really a villain. Well, I guess he's a villain. It's he's almost kind of refreshing to find, like, you know, a, a, a story that I'm enjoying that's not an event mm -hmm. at this point. Right. It's just a like story. it's just a regular run, and holy shit! Like I'm, I'm fucking so surprised when I like something. All the way through. And, and the story before this, unless I'm confusing Uncanny and Regular, but I don't know now. Which one? Which story? The story oh, prior to this was the Lizard in X Men. Right. Well, it's I the, think in both cases, the story prior to this, to these stories, had nothing to do with that one. It's not like you had right. no. It was like a continuation. Right. So anything at this point was a good jump on point. Yeah. 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 I only jumped on X Men My with baby. the story with the Lizard because it guest starred Spider Man. Yeah. So. And I like Terry Dodson's artwork. Who was Terry Dodson's awesome. Yeah. You know, he was doing the cover for that, and it was yeah. awesome. That's who was doing, um, I think, prior to his on that kind of accident story, it was Dod mm -hmm. Dodson's, and it's always good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he was, drawing, he was drawing the covers, and then uh, I want to say Scotty Young, but I, I may be wrong. He was doing the interiors. I like his artwork. Maybe it was Scotty Umberto Young? Ramos. Maybe it was Umberto Ramos. Oh, I think it was Scotty It was one of those, like, really cartoony... <clears throat> sketchy, blocky artists, mm -hmm. but Ramos, Ramos, it was Ramos, Ramos, Ramos I can't remember, man. Everything just blends itself together at this point. <laughs> you know, fucking, I don't know what's going on. I mean, I got a little bit of shit for, uh, we, we had a while back, somebody asked us, like, what our favorite books were over the course of the past, top five storylines over the course of the past three years, and I mentioned Back in Black. Which was four or five years ago. Yeah. I fucking remember. <laughs> I read, I, every fucking day of my life is reading Yeah, comics. dude, we were still I, working together when that came out. I don't remember a god day. I don't remember years. <laughs> I didn't even know Captain America came out yesterday. I was <laughs> getting... Sh they came out the phone. Wow. I'm on a roll. You are. 
You must be butter, because you're on a roll. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thor, Heaven and Earth came out, so issue one of four is another beautifully painted mm -hmm. series by uh, Olivier. I can't remember. Olivetti. Olivetti. Olivetti, I'm Olivetti. sorry. Olivetti. Okay. Uh, he, I don't remember his first name. He's the guy that did. Uh, Nick. No, not Nick. No, he did Namor. He did a couple of other, uh, one or two other Thor series that like these, like the painted ones. Uh, okay, didn't do cable. I did cable for yeah. He was doing uh, X Force and cable I think right. for a little while. But uh, just a fun story, mm -hmm. mini series. Cool uh, stuff. You know, not if, if you're fucking hard up for a Thor title at this point, which I don't think you will be. <laughs> Although it, it 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 has a couple of pretty cool oh shit moments at the end, so. Ultimate Fallout number two. This is coming out weekly, uh, mind you. Uh, Aunt May slaps Captain America because that was great. That was tough. That was great. I still wish Bagley was drawing this, but I don't know um, what the Thor scene had to do with anything. Was I don't really know either, but it yeah. was cool to kind of see. First of all, it was the nice to is, see Marvel encourages underage drinking because Peter Parker is sixteen and he's he also is dead. Valhalla getting sauced. He's dead. Well, this is Valhalla. Well, Valhalla, yeah. the drinking age is probably seven or eight. Probably, yeah. But Valhalla, the, you, no, you've got other dead. Asgardians are born with a mug in their hand. <laughs> like, it's so, mug in like you, you've got the Wasp, you've got Wolverine, <laughs> Cyclops, and who I'm concluding, I think that's jo the original Giant Man. So all of these people are partying it up in Valhalla, the the Hall of Heroes. And um, then you've you got Rogue, who... Oh my god, I just noticed this guy's plumber's crack. Wow, I didn't really yeah. need to see that. <laughs> Basically, this whole story is just how it's the death of Spider-Man is affecting everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's not wasting too much time on one particular character. They get four or five pages, move on to the next Aunt character. Aunt kind of is yeah. in the middle because Aunt May is in the middle, but, you know. Right. right. And you, Mary what Jane is trying to, cr like, let everybody know about Nick Fury and the Ultimates and everything. And she's right. trying to crack some case, and that's... The story that's possibly going to tie everything that's together, the only story, or story that's an actual story that's in these. It's four. running around in the background at this yeah. point. You'll see probably more of that, you know, as the issues go on in the next couple of weeks. Um, Spider Island Spotlight, I didn't really get to, but basically it's just an interview with the creators of Spider Island, which is a future story coming out in the next couple of weeks, starting with ASM six sixty six. Um, basically, according to the Jackal, everybody's getting spider powers. You, me, Henry the neighbor, John the plumber, you too. And even that creepy dude around the corner? Yeah. The creepy dude around the corner is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. He's crawling up oh, into girls' bedrooms. Ooh. Um, he does it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's easier for now him. Now it's easier. <laughs> so basically, Manhattan is becoming Spider Island. Infested. Whatever. Uh, okay. Haunted City, I did not get to yet from Aspen, this is issue zero, so, but I did pick up the nifty variant cover for like a dollar more. Pretty nice looking cover. Um, so I will, more on this for next week. And, Abattoir from Radical Comics, issue six concluded. I, I don't know what to make of this. I wanted to enjoy it, I liked the artwork, I don't know what happened here. Yeah. You're not gonna understand it. This oh, issue came out... I just wanna see the artwork. Everything came out too kind of spread out, and the story was very involved. At this point, having read issue six, I'm still I'm sitting here like, well, what the fuck? I didn't I don't think I've gotten any of my questions answered. Who is this guy? This old guy, Jebediah Crone? Why does he have these hellish powers? How does? And why does he look? What the hell? It's radical. It's so weird. Like I'm gonna go back, and I think I'm gonna read one through six in try one shot, it. and try to understand it. If you guys out there have read Abattoir, if you're reading it, um, let me know what you thought about it. Try to explain it to me, please, because I don't think I know what the explain fuck Explain it so even we can understand. Please, make it idiot-proof. Write us a letter, questions at PeteSpaceman.com, or start a thread on Facebook, and let me know what the hell is going on with Abattoir. Or if I'm pronouncing that right, let me know. Abattoir. Abattoir. Those French make everything so different. Yeah, you French. It's, it's Abattoir. Croissant. Croissant. Crescent. Croissant. Crescent. Crescent roll. What do you got, Steve? It's a Croissant. Comics. Comics. Criminal. That's a shock. I never pronounce it. Macabre. Macabre. I never pronounce it. The R E R S is silent. Criminal Macabre, which is a character, I guess. I don't read. You were gonna pick this up. I was going to pick it up. Why were you gonna pick this up? Because it was the goon, and you kind of got me into the goon with the Harry Potter. Very good. Okay. I thought maybe because I had. So I was no, I was gonna give it a shot. Oh. It um. I don't know who. I thought Criminal Macabre was the title of the story. No, it's a character thing, but it's a Dark Horse character. Okay. I guess he hunts 
I'm getting kind of su- sick of these hunter, vampire hunter people. Mm-hmm. It seems like that's what he is. I don't know. And his sidekick, I think, is like a ghost or something. Zombie kind of character? I don't know. It didn't seem bad. It just seemed... But the, he meets up with Goon. Two separate entities. The, there's two separate entities. One's like werewolves, one's like vampire. I think. I don't know. Oh, and God. one side hires him to kill him, basically. One side, and then I'll really... Like, I wound up not picking it up because when I picked it up, I realized that it wasn't drawn by Eric Powell, it was, and that I didn't watch, I just grabbed it, I'm stupid. I mean, the artwork wasn't <laughs> bad. Don't get me wrong, it it's was, bad. Uh, it was drawn by one of the guys that was, has been recently doing a couple of Hellboy miniseries. Well, at the very end, spoiler or not, look who pops up. See what I mean? Because it's Dark Horse. But, um, uh, I don't know who, I get the impression that whoever wrote it was trying to write it as if Eric Powell was writing uh-huh. his characters. Yeah. It didn't seem like, because it's a story Steve Niles, who I think writes Criminal Macabre, and it says farts and negativity Eric Powell. Uh-huh. So I'm not sure. So maybe like he had a little <laughs> hand in it or whatever. Lending his characters out maybe. Mm-hmm. So I... Did it, it work for you? No. I didn't really That's remember. a shame. Um, and Lock and Key, number one, Clockworks. This is like the fourth or fifth part to this to Lock and Key. You don't read uh-huh. this, right? This no. is going to be one of those... I, this is going to be one of those... Um, like the sword, sword and yeah. girls like yeah. that Pete should have been reading from Jump Street and never got around to. This basically, if you're reading Lock and Key... Like, it's hard to explain the whole thing now, but this is basically... Is this the last part? Like... I don't I don't think so, because this seems to be going back and explaining the history behind the house, the uh-huh. key house, and the keys, and where they came from, and so I doubt it's going to end at the beginning. So How many so. trades are there right now? How many stories do we have? I think this is the fifth. Okay, so let's let's assume four trades. Welcome to Lovecraft as the first one, then Head Games, and Crown of Shadows... And then the and newest one that just came Keys out. Keys to the King House, King, uh, Kingdom. So there's four other ones, and now there's the fifth. The fifth one has just part. started. Yeah. Okay. So. Now, because Ramon was telling me something when we were at the comic shop the other day mm-hmm. with, uh, you know, about this being like the last section. Oh, oh, in 12 issues, it's all over. Oh, okay. Okay, so that, yeah, there we go. Oh, 12 issues, though. Yeah. So it'll probably be six issues of Clockworks, and then it'll probably be six Probably one more thing so after it'll be, that. So it'll be six. The story actually ends. Because this seems to be... This takes place in 1775. Uh-huh. This is like the history behind everything. Uh-huh. So, there'll probably be six issues of this. You, you've been on this since uh, day one, right? Almost, yeah. Ramon actually got me on this. Mm. So, because Joe Hill, I like his books. His books without pictures, you know. <laughs> his novels? His novels. Speaking of Joe Hill, uh, The Cake comes out next week, issue one. So, oh, yeah. if, you, uh, if you enjoyed the Legacy Edition that uh, reprinted the first kind of one shot of The Cake, do yourself a favor and pick this up. So that's not like that. Do you ever TV read that? that was no, it has nothing no, to do no. with the TV show of the same name. Okay. You owe this to yourself. Pick this up. eBay this. Yeah. It'll cost you like three dollars. You will not regret it. Okay. I promise you. It's got Joy Hill's stamp of fucked up in this right here. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. And uh, before we conclude here at the basement show for the day, um, Richard John Nichols asked what I thought of the Hellraiser book since that was in uh, my haul list, which reminds me, uh, if you guys have not subscribed yet to the haul at Pete'sBasement.com, just go to the website, and there in the upper corner, you'll find the haul, and just uh, kind of follow the clicks as necessary, and basically you'll get an email once a week, and uh, you know you can see kind of what we're reading, what we're reviewing, and what we're looking forward to, and uh, if there's anything on there that you think we should be adding, or you know you want to let us know why the fuck are you even buying that, cool. Feel free to lie to us. Write to us. It's like toadstool. Right? It doesn't look like a little toadstool. Yeah, if you eat it, you... Uh, so uh, make sure you guys subscribe to the haul and uh, let us know what you think of what we're getting and uh, what maybe we should be getting. We love hearing recommendations from you guys. Uh, Rich, as far as Hellraiser goes, um, it, it seems a little weird to me. Uh, I'm a big 80s horror movie fan, and it, it's like they're going in the same direction as they were with... Uh, with Freddy versus Jason versus Ash, that I, I'm pretty sure it was Dynamite that put that out. Yeah. I believe so. Um, basically, the whole concept there was they were getting everybody that survived an encounter with Freddy or Jason, and uh, they were gonna make this little like pseudo militia and go after the two of them. Mm. Now they're kind of doing the same shit with Hellraiser in a much bloodier, much darker, gritty sense because it's from Boom Studios. Um, where they're getting everybody who's encountered the Xenobites uh, st- with Kirsty from Hellraiser 1 being like the main character and she's kind of gathering everybody and she, they're going to go to war with Pinhead and his crew. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you've got Pinhead completely out of character wanting to kind of give up being a Xenobite. And he, he either wants to retire completely and just die or he wants to like try to go to heaven and atone for his sins, which either way doesn't make too much sense to me because mm-hmm. 
If you've ever seen a Hellraiser movie, Pinhead enjoys fucking motherfuckers up. Maybe he's changed. Yeah, obviously he's turned over a new leaf. Old age. So I'm not. I'm not really. It's bloody. It's it's gutsy. Uh, and I mean that in the literal the and metaphoric sense. Um, they do kill an entire family at one point. The Xenobites. There's some fucked up shit going on. The box has uh, absolutely no mercy. Just like in real life. Um. 70s pussy joke. What? I know. I'm right. just... Yeah. So, uh, I'll let you guys... I'm not gonna pass my final judgment on that until the first story arc is done, so I'll keep you posted. And, uh, Rich, always thanks for writing to us. And, uh, Vince, we have not forgotten about willpower. We just, uh, I just forgot to give it to Ramon. Right. And, but we will get to your review very soon, and lots of luck with willpower, too, as well. Uh, for any of you guys who don't know, check out the willpower fan page on Facebook. Uh, you can do a lot worse than that. Fair enough. That about does it for this week at the basement. That's We're it. Done. I think we are done. Put the air conditioners on. Put the fucking AC Jeez. on. No one's allowed to complain about the heat of the summer after the winter we had. Jeez. Jeez. Mm -hmm. uh, eh. Fans! Oh, on. Yep. Upper on. left. Upper left. There we go. Uh, ah. See you guys next week. What's up, guys? Pete's Basement Crew at Midtown Comics, Fulton Street. Ran into our good buddy, Jarhead. Welcome to New York City, man. Yes. Welcome to our comic shops. Oh, what are you picking up this week? Well, uh, I'm picking up a lot. <laughs> I counted I like 19 but, bucks, plus, plus uh, the free uh, DC book. Where is that? Put that. Is that right? I got it right here. Yep. That will be the uh, preview of all the DC number ones that are coming out. Yep. Which are looking a lot less good the more and more information I hear about it. As I'm really not happy with the whole reboot right. of Superman and the marriage thing. It just reminds me of a brand new day. Yeah, it's like, um, I don't know. I, I just hope they just don't like, they just don't go over all of it again. And I'm actually kind of glad that they are going to, uh, you know, skip over everybody's origins and just start. Jump to, right to it. Yeah. And then, um, then like Superman's gonna have his own origin book. I wonder if that means like you know Batman would get like Detective Comics as his origin book. Any, anything has got to be an improvement on Batman as far as I'm concerned now. Yeah. But you guys have actually a comic book coming out. Is that true? Yeah. Um, we just released on uh, July second, uh, Dragon Rider: New Prophecy by George A. Uh, Castilla, and um, he's it's pretty much like a history and legend mixed together into one world. And it's uh, U.S. history, like a world history kind uh, of thing. No, it's like um, I guess it's like uh, you know mid medieval so history. Mm. So okay. yeah, and it's uh, it brings both them together in one world. It's like uh, you know how religion and politics in that time has kind of like uh, brought an impact to today. Mm. You know? And that's how that's uh, cool. And when that came out already? Uh, yeah, it came out July twenty, uh, uh, July second. Now is that local to where you're at, or is it going um, nation? It's going uh, right now. We're not sure. We know that it's on our website. Okay. It's, it's six ninety nine, and um, I'm pretty sure it'll go. Uh, order it as a download, or order it and it gets mailed to you. Uh, oh. Order it and it'll get uh, mailed to you. Okay. Published. Yeah. It's um. It's a graphic novel. Has three stories in it, and it's uh. It, it's pretty good. It's pretty cool. Cool. You're gonna yeah. hook us up with that so we can review it for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you should be getting it uh, Saturday. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Oh, right, dude, thanks for coming. No problem. Enjoy the rest of your trip to New York, and I will. don't be a stranger. I won't. <laughs> and we want to thank you always for posting up the episodes and posting up all kinds of information no and everything. No problem. You've been possibly been one of them. How long have you been a fan of the show? Um, I've been a fan of the show um, probably two or three years around that time. Hopefully you'll find something better to do with your time. Right. Uh, <laughs> we're also, um, we're, yeah, we're also doing, uh, we're also releasing uh, Fleet. To uh, it's uh, Flea, Fall of the Rising Sun. Cool. It's by uh, the uh, the head guy at Phoenix Fire Studios, and uh, it's about um, it's like a, a science fiction um, story of a character who is working for a government agency who's pretty much like bad, mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty much. Um, the, the agency's bad or the guy's bad? The agency's bad. Okay. And it's uh, called the Rising Sun, and um, so the character he's uh, he runs off from the Rising Sun. He kind of goes rogue. And uh, it goes through a bunch of stuff, and uh, that's pretty much all I can really say right. right now. So um, it oh, should I'm be out soon. With uh, both publications, I can yeah. always tell you, you know, just from knowing a lot of people in the industry, right. it's self-publication is one of the toughest but most rewarding things. So yeah, it is. Lots of luck with that, man. Keep yeah. reading. I will. 
What's up, everybody? He just farted. I did not. <laughs> it is way too hot down here for anybody to be farting. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> if anybody farts, that person deserves to get punched by the other two people. That was inadvertently in poor taste. Did I apologize to the people of the internet. Did you mix Gatorade and corn whiskey? Yeah. That's gotta taste like shit. <laughs> It tastes like corn rain. <laughs> corn rain. Gator porn. <laughs> Gator. <laughs> Gator porn? What? Ew. 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 Warm? Want me to check that real quick? Yeah. Okay. Do 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 Oh my god, it's a dum dum desert to taste getting some more dirt-dum. Update. Elephant tranquilizer! Wow, that was actually a good start. Thanks, Steve! Oh my god. Sorry, it's too hot here. Steve, you can ruin a wet dream. One more time. One more time. It went from there being something written there. To they can't see that, Steve. No, Trust me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hellos. Yo, yo, yo. Pack it up, pack it in. Let me begin. I came to win battle me. That's a sin. And recording. <laughs>